Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Danger Room quests here in Ultimate Alliance 3. Today, we are looking at one of the higher difficulty danger rifts, that being the Epsilon difficulty. And this is where things really change in terms of what the format for the danger room looks like. And we'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer to that section. But as we get ready to jump in here, make sure you check to see if you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not, please take a moment and do so, as that greatly helps me out. And if you enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a like. Now, the first couple of pieces of this danger room is pretty similar to what we've seen in the past, but there are a couple of differences right off the bat. As you'll see here, we have our round one where we are needing to defeat the most amount of enemies. And we've seen segments like this, and we are typically able to pretty handily beat our opponents as we do that. But there is a very substantial change to that formula as we seek to take out our opponents here. And that is done due to the introduction of a couple of different things. So... Let's see what happens right off the bat here. Typically, we are confronted with a couple of, you know, just standard uh, grunts and other enemies, but the real change to the formula here is not only are we in a section of the map that we haven't really seen before as we are whisked away to the wonderful lands of Wakanda, but we also are confronted by a couple of insectoids from the expansion of the Shadow of Doom. Uh, Nihilus's Horde is really the majority of the opponents that we see hanging up here. And right off the bat, we have fallen a little bit behind, but I am taking extra caution and care to pay attention to the objectives on the left-hand side of our screen so we can apply detriments to our opponents, such as stunning enemies as well as... Uh, there was another objective that popped off right off the bat that I think was... Uh, dealing with synergies to some effect or using abilities and Here is where we see things ramping up quite a bit more So we have these insectoid enemies that have spawned in But we also have a couple of mini bosses that spawn in and a lot of the different curses that are introduced or were introduced as a part of the uh, Curse of the vampire expansion so you see that we have curses you see that we have Phoenix integrations you see that we have uh, infected enemies, enemies that explode upon de being defeated, uh, just a lot of different effects taking place over the course of these fights here. And Storm is being particularly a uh, bit of a nuisance as she's up on that riser area. But we should be able to lay level the playing field with our extreme attacks here pretty well. And you'll see that we're really trying to make sure that we can take out these different opponents and keep level with what we're trying to do and we're needing to now focus on trying to get our opponents defeated by using basic attacks in order to send over an elemental capacitor to our opponents here we also need to defeat three infected opponents and as a reminder those are any of the opponents that are shrouded in that black uh, oily tinge so you have the cursed enemies, such as Black Panther that's right here, and the curse will allow opponents to become infected, but it is not the infection itself. We're now ramping into a couple of our extreme attacks to try and upkeep and surge ahead of the amount of enemies being defeated when compared with that of our opponents, and these large insectoids are certainly doing us no favors. But we do have Black Panther taken down out of the equation as the timer starts to wind down here. And it's just a matter of securing the victory with a couple of final eliminations here, which we're able to do fairly well within the last you know, 10 seconds that remain on the timer. And these extreme attacks will really help us increase that. As you saw that there were some damage increase banners that showed as we slogged through the remainder of this challenge as well. And as always, once you are done with these danger rooms, you are given a option to select a boost. And the ones that I was presented with here, I didn't really have a preference on too heavily, but I figured that a critical hit rating might be beneficial for us. So we go ahead and activate that. 
as we move into round two, which is going to be a, another section of defeating all bosses. This time around, it will be in order Storm, Daredevil, and Psylocke. And they definitely have their challenges as we seek to uh, take them on and fight them. This is actually going to take place in the entrance to the Latveria Castle, a section which we're familiar with from the Shadow of Doom DLC. And it definitely makes things a little bit interesting. So you'll see here that right off the start we have the first section uh, roped off, and this is pretty similar to what we saw with one of the challenges in the gauntlet runs within the Shadow of Doom DLC. I think there were a couple of missions that had this format of the three different sections of this bridge. It's generally patrolled by a couple more uh, laser grids or laser uh, puzzles to sift through, but that is not the case for this portion of the uh, fight that we're going after. But similar to what we've seen before, there is one main hero that we'll need to take down, or one main boss character, and then there will be a couple of other mini-bosses that are summoned in along with them, just different versions of the same character that are going to allow for increased damage as we continue through. We now move into the section with Daredevil, and Daredevil, he has the Gravity Surge ability around him where he's going to pull us into his attacks, which can be very, very scary, actually, based off of the fact that Daredevil can and does have a lot of attacks that hit up close and personal, as well as his next witness ability, which is going to lower the defense of anyone who is stuck within the realm of that attack. So you've got to be very cautious with that. You also want to, as always, keep a dependent eye on the left hair, the right hand side of the screen in order to determine whether or not you are keeping up with the objectives that are needed and either preserving your own benefits or sending detriments over to your opponents. And as we see here, we've got Daredevil just about finished out and we should be able to finish him with just a couple more of our synergy attacks here. I am holding on to my extreme attacks for the last little section and the mini bosses that we have to defeat in the final area of this uh, run of this danger room. But if you also pay notice to the bar up top, I'm not super concerned with being able to do that efficiently because we are very far ahead of our opponents. And as a matter of fact, the whole reason why I had my extreme attacks on hold was just for this, because as you see as we detonate the different extreme attacks here, it basically one-shots the boss of Psylocke that we were needing to take on, and that is the end of the second section of this danger room. We're now presented with another boost opportunity, and this time of the options presented, the synergy boost was the one that really spoke to me the most, as synergy attacks are a very important portion of getting the damage that you need uh, put out there in order to ensure that you are going to do so successfully. The third and final room of the main stretch of this danger room is going to be finding and defeating the Green Goblin. This does start off in the fight in the same fight progression with Dr. Octopus and a couple of Outrider enemies as well. And I believe that the Outriders are mainly present, so you can meet some of the other criteria that are presented as challenges within the Danger Room, as well as increase your abilities here and assure that you can uh, recharge your stamina and other items as needed to keep layering in with your abilities and synergies. Now, Dr. Octopus, he is one of the more annoying bosses to fight, in particular because he has an ability that sends him careening or charging across the map, similar to that of the Thing and the Hulk. But we can layer into him very succinctly with our newly buffed synergy attacks, and that will help bring Dr. Octopus down to his knees uh, pretty quickly. We now move over to the second phase of the Dr. Octopus fight, which again takes place in the elevator. And this is an interesting portion of the fight. 
Though if you have opponents or characters on your team that can kind of rush around, you're going to have an easier time with this. I should have been doing some jumping here, uh, and I think that I am able to do so uh, pretty easily as I go around to the different corners of this elevator. As what we're looking to do is take down these uh, arms in order to stagger out Dr. Octopus. And heavy attack and dash attacks from Thanos tend to do very well with that. I am also holding on to my extreme attacks yet again because I think that they will be a lot more beneficial for us in the second phase of this fight. And at this point, I'm really just making sure that I am taking advantage of the uh, the lead that I've built up and taking down our opponents here. Now, Green Goblin, this is a very different fight from what we're used to, mainly due to the fact that we have a couple of these gravity orbs hanging around uh, and on the two edges of the battlefield that send out three different gravity spheres at 180 degree angles. But we did get off a decent amount of damage onto Green Goblin with our abilities there. It's now just a matter of assuring that we can get the damage in on Green Goblin that's needed. It may be a good idea to use some of his pumpkin bombs on the Danger Room Hazards here, as that will be a very easy way of getting the attacks down. And I did not want to be afflicted with that HP drain that you see over there on the right hand side. So I was using a synergy attacks with the knowledge that the synergy attacks that I'm unleashing are probably not doing a whole lot to really be beneficial in the fight against Green Goblin. But I would rather have him taken down than have to worry about my HP draining over the duration of the remainder of the fight here. He does activate the second phase of his fight, though he did not have the main uh, cutting off point in his health bar, or at least that I was able to see. That was not something that was present. And I should have taken some more time to take out these danger room hazards right off the bat of this fight. So we'll go ahead and take that care of that right now. We now need to just keep a pinned, pendant eye on the shenanigans that Green Goblin is up to. And with a couple more of our pumpkin bombs being thrown out, we'll be able to get the burn three inflicted onto our opponents by unleashing our extreme attacks onto Green Goblin. We really just need to stagger him out one final time, and that's going to be all we need in order to finish him out. And apparently he's more vulnerable to his own pumpkin bomb attacks when he is ramping up into his time stone ability, which is an interesting thing to keep track of. Now this is where things change, as you see that there was just a vocal cue for the Dark Phoenix Protocol initiation. And this is a terrifying sequence because Dark Phoenix is quite possibly one of the most difficult bosses in the game. Thankfully, it's not the hardest rendition of this fight, but it still gives you a run for your money as the entire platform catches on fire anytime Dark Phoenix is not fully paralyzed. So you will consistently and constantly take some damage from the abilities here that she's throwing out. And there's really not a whole lot of places to run away from her attacks here. Now, we are able to nullify a lot of the ill effects of this arena by staggering out Phoenix here. And by detonating our extreme attacks, we're able to get in a solid chunk of damage and stay well enough ahead of our opponents. Now, something important to note here is that you don't get a do-over in this section of the fight if you do happen to fail it. Um, so you've got to be able to clear this out if you want to have any chance of claiming the rewards from your run here within this danger room. And at this stage, I'm just zipping back and forth with a base version of Thanos Infinite's dash attack ability, mainly because I want to assure that we can get that stagger damage increased through those by those three stages as that's really going to help us iron out and finish up the remainder of this fight and dark phoenix she is pulling no punches by unleashing two of her ashes to ashes attacks right there back to back one after the other now since we are dealing more damage to dark phoenix here 
we are able to get her wood down within the last 10% of her health, and by layering into her with a couple of final attacks, primarily from Thanos Infinite, we are able to take her out and put her down and claim the victory in the Epsilon difficulty of the Danger Rooms. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please feel free to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more daily content, and we'll see you tomorrow with the next episode of our Marvel Avengers for PlayStation 4 playthrough. Thank you, and have a fantastic rest of your day.